بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Continue from our book, Kitab At-Tawheed, the book of Tawheed or the book of monotheism. And we said what is meant here by Kitab At-Tawheed is that which is obligatory concerning At-Tawheed, the monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in our last chapter, can everybody remember what we covered last? Because between the classes, inshaAllah ta'ala, I would advise you to revise. And even prior to the class, if you know what's going to be covered next, to read before the class. So since the end of the last class, I don't know if anybody's looked back or revised what we studied. Naam. Naam. We looked lastly at Man haqqaqat tawheed dakhal al-jannah bi ghayri hisab. Whoever establishes tawheed in their life will enter the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any reckoning. And the reason it is important to always look at the previous chapter before the new chapter is that there's sometimes a relevance between the previous chapter and the chapter that we're going to cover today or any other day. So always look at the previous chapter, inshallah ta'ala. And the chapter we're going to look at today, inshallah ta'ala, is Bab Khawfu Min Shirk, the chapter of fearing shirk. Now, what is the relevance, number one, of this chapter to the previous chapter? Number two, باب خوف من الشرك, the obligation to fear shirk. That before mentioning the obligation to fear shirk, we need to define what is shirk. Very important. As for the relevance of this chapter to the previous chapter, which is whoever has established Tawheed or enter Jannah, is this. That Tawheed is the most valuable the most important thing in the life of a Muslim. And when something is valuable to you, what do you do with that thing? What do you do with your most valued possessions? You protect it. Whether you put it in a bank, you put it in a safe, you protect it. Not only do you protect it, you investigate, you research any way that those who have had ill intentions could use to get to that thing. So you fear the transgression of the transgressors. So anybody who has established a Tawheed, and Tawheed is truly, truly valuable to him, what does he fear? Falling into the opposite of Tawheed, Shirk. So you can never really value something that you possess, except you fear to lose that thing. And that's why the author, after mentioning whoever establishes Tawheed, enters Jannah, he came with a chapter of Khawfu min shirk to fear Shirk. And that's why with this particular book, Kitab al-Tawheed, to show to which extent people fear losing a Tawheed, once some brothers will be studying this book in France, I think you all seen the post some years ago, that the brothers in France, they studied Kitab al-Tawheed and they completed it. And they wrote to Sheikh Abdul Aziz and Sheikh Hafiz Allah Azza wa Jal, and they said, we finish, walillahi alhamd, Kitab al-Tawheed, the book of Tawheed. What should we study next? You know what his answer was? He asked, are they still living in France? They said, yes. He said, you need to study the book again. Subhanallah. To the extent that people made the hijrah, they migrated out of fear of what? Losing that Tawheed. And yet in our time today, you have people not for the sake that the Sharia of Allah Azza wa has made permissible, migrating to the land of Kufr, 
Not only did they fear for themselves losing their tawheed, their children. In these countries, like any other countries, Qatar, Saudi, wherever, your children may stop practicing. But rarely would you go to the level of kufr or shirk. In those countries, you should fear that for your children. So, to that extent, if somebody was to live in a neighborhood and next door to you or all around you were brothels and bars and drug dealers and all sorts of immorality, would you willfully choose to live next door to a brothel? No. Drug dealers? No. But people today, they willfully go to a place where shirk and kufr is the order of the day. What is the difference? So, bab khawf min shirk the chapter of a shirk falling into a shirk associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the purpose of this chapter is takhweef, to make people fear and to make people frightened of falling into a shirk. But in order to become frightened of something, you have to first and foremost know what is that thing? What is a shirk? What is associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil asl in its origin? Normally, when we say shirk, it's translated in English as what? Associating partners of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walakin al fi shirk. What is the root or what is the foundation of a shirk? For those taking notes, al aslu fi shirk, the root and the foundation of shirk is taswiyatu ghayri Allahi billahi fi khasa'isihi. That the root and origin of shirk, so that a person knows, is this shirk, am I associating partners of Allah or not? And this definition enters into the two categories of shirk, minor shirk and major shirk. Because this is what the author, when we look at the text, which I doubt we're going to cover today, the ayats and hadith, is talking about the two types, major and minor. Shirk in asl is to ascribe equals or to show equivalency, similarity between Allah and other than Allah in his attributes or in his qualities. Again, a shirk of al-asl is to show or ascribe equality, equivalence or similarity between Allah and his creation in that which is only for Allah. And when we define the Tawheed, we say Tawheed is what? To single out Allah in that which is only for Allah, in three issues. And what are those three issues? Ibadah, worship, lordship, and names and attributes. So shirk, again, is to ascribe equals to Allah. from the creation of Allah in that which is only for Allah. And we're going to make it clearer, inshaAllah. And this is the type of shirk that's rejected in the book of Allah. And this is shirk fil asl. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he speaks about the kuffar, Surah Al-An'am, verse one. What is the attributes of the disbelievers, the mushrikun? Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ يَعْدِلُونَ that the disbelievers in Allah, they ascribe equals and partners to Allah, equals to Allah, equivalency to Allah. And the mushrikeen, the polytheists in the hellfire, when they are in the hellfire, what would they say to their idols? They'll be saying to the idols in the hellfire to show that shirk is to ascribe equals, they will say in the hellfire to their idols, Tallahi. In kunna lafi dalalim mubi. They will say, We swear by Allah. We were in manifest and clear error. Why were they in clear error, manifest error? This is Surah Shu'ara, verse 98. Why were they in manifest error? In the next ayah, they will say, If you say, We kum bi rabbil alameen, that we made you equal to the Lord of the worlds. So a shirk fil asl, shirk in origin is to make somebody or something equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a shirk fil asl, which is why the scholars such as 
when the Imam of Islam he said that man adala billahi shay'an min khalqihi fa huwa mushrik whoever makes anything from the creation of Allah equal to Allah is a mushrik is a polytheist and Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah azza wa jalla said that shirk an ta'dila billahi makhluqatihi makhluqatahu fi ba'd khasaisihi that shirk is for you to equate anything to Allah from his creation in that which is only for Allah fi ma yastahiquhu wahda in that which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he deserves aw for you to compare or draw similarity between the creator and the creation and in which ways in three ways and what are the three ways in the same way tawhid is to single out allah azza wa jal alone in his lordship for you to draw equality between allah azza wa jal and his creation is to ascribe certain attributes of lordship to other than allah what's an attribute of a lordship when we say allah is rabbul alamin what does that mean? Is the only what? Huh? Rabb. Naam? Because we define the rububiyya. What is a rububiyya? Barakallah fi. That al-khaliq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the only creator. Is the only one responsible for life. So if you believe, other than something probable, like somebody shooting or stabbing, that somebody could cause your death, or something could cause your death, is this shirk or not shirk? It's shirk. When a person in ibadah, acts of worship, in the same way he calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls on other than Allah, he says, Ya Rasulullah, ghithni. O oh, Messenger of Allah, deliver me from this. Or oh, calls upon a malaika, an angel. I say, Ya Jibreel, is this shirk or not shirk? It is shirk. It is because it's done what? That act of worship, a dua, is only for who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, in the names and attributes of Allah. If a person says, Allah hears, like I hear. Is this shirk? Why is it shirk? Similarity, inequality. What if a person now says, he goes to the other extreme. He said, no, Allah does not hear because I hear. Allah doesn't see because I see. Allah doesn't speak because I speak. So I negate the attributes of Allah. I don't want to compare Allah to me. Is this shirk? Is it shirk? Why is it shirk? Barakallahu feek. Because the cause of rejection is that he compared Allah to himself. And that's why the scholars say Al-Jahmiyyah, those who negate the attributes of Allah, they're also mushrikun. They're also what? They're also polytheists. Because the cause of their rejection is what? To compare Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to themselves. So huwa. This is shirk in asr. And this shirk is divided into two. There's major shirk and there's minor shirk. What is major shirk? Major shirk, for those taking notes, is tasweer i'tiqadiyya. To make Allah equal to anything from His creation in your i'tiqad, in your belief, in your belief system. To draw equivalency or scribe equals to Allah in belief. This major shirk, it throws a person outside the fold of Islam. Major shirk, anyone that falls into it, and this is the danger of shirk, it throws them outside the fold of Islam. And a person that's outside the fold of Islam, none of their deeds are accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal. They abide in the hellfire forever. And how many Muslims today, they fall into major shirk, they're not even aware. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we've inspired and revealed to you. قبلك, and those who came before you. Allah's talking to the Prophet, ﷺ, the best of creation. That if you was to fall into shirk, all your actions will become null and void. What about us? 
This shirk, it shows a person outside the fold of Islam. That if you ascribe equals to Allah, either in worship, how could a person ascribe equals to Allah in worship? We mention one example of worship, which is what? Dua. So when a person goes to the grave, like we find Muslims today, even the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say we're not praying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want him to take our dua, we're calling upon him to take our dua to Allah. This is shirk of jahiliyyah. This is what the mushrikeen used to do. When a person goes, Ya Abdul Qadir Jailani, who calls upon the people in the grave, this is shirk of the people of jahiliyyah. What is another shirk in ibadah? What's another act of ibadah? That we find people directing to the other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adhabhu, to sacrifice. Nowadays, you have many people, they say they're afflicted with jinn, sihr, ayn. And this is one of the ways that people fall into what? Into shirk. Through this issue of ruqya. And a sahir, a person who performs magic, is never successful with magic except with what? With fear. So the people of Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when they came, the sihrin azim, with that great magic, what did they do first? وَاسْتَرْهَبُوهُمْ وَجَاءُوا بِسِحْرٍ عَظِيمٍ They terrorized them. Because in some narrations of the snakes that were in front of Musa, some say, you know how many snakes were in front of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam? How many do you think? If you go to Tafsir, some say in front of Musa, and Musa only had one stick. Halqafu ma sona'u Swallowed up everything they did. One. And that's what Allah Ta'ala said, La takhaf. Don't fear. In some tafsir, some say 500 snakes, 5,000. Some even said up to 500,000 snakes in front of Musa. Imagine that. And not just 500 snakes, they were like real snakes. Tasa'a was moving like this. So people go to be for Ruqya, and when you go, they say, look, sacrifice a goat, and they'll give you descriptions of this goat, a black goat, a white goat, a brown goat, and when you sacrifice it, take it to a drainage, probably where the waste goes, and slaughter it there. Don't feed it to yourself, don't feed it to your family. So who are you sacrificing this to? The jinn. This is shirk. It throws a person outside the fold of Islam. من الشرك في العبادة كذلك is an oath or vow to anybody that I'm going to do this deed if this happens for you كذلك من الشرك فما الشرك الأكبر كذلك is in the rububiyya, the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the asma and the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the major shirk it shows a person outside the fold of Islam the next category is a shirku al asghar the minor shirk. Now, when people hear this minor shirk, they think it's an easy affair. Okay, the major shirk, it shows me outside the fold of Islam. But minor shirk, it sounds minor, right? But it's not minor. It is worse than sins. It's a very serious affair. And that's why the ulama say, wa kafa fi qubhihi, tasmiyatuhu shirkan. It suffices how despicable it is that it's called what? Shirk. Because when a person has cancer, may Allah Ta'ala protect us from that. Ameen. There's cancer which is terminal and severe and there's non-terminal cancer. But cancer is cancer. Shirk is shirk. And minor or non-terminal cancer sometimes becomes what? Becomes terminal. So when you say minor shirk, do not think it's an easy affair. It's still a very serious affair. So what is minor shirk? The ulama they say, for those taking note, minor shirk, kullu ma wurida fihi nas, wallam yasir ila shirk al-akbar. Any text you find in the Quran or in the Sunnah mentioning such and such a shirk, however, it's not reached the level of major shirk. Okay? And some of the other ulama, like Imam Al-Si'idi, he said, كل وسيلة أو كل ذريعة يتطرق منها إلى شرك الأكبر. Every means or every path that will lead you to major shirk. 
every path or every means that leads to major shirk from intent well and statements and actions but it's not reached the level of worship this definition is extremely vast it covers too much this definition what does it cover every single sin meaning every single sin could possibly lead to what to shirk it covers every single sin and that's why the same way we find fair minor shirk we should fair sins some of the ulama they say every sin is what minor shirk based on the saying of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have you not seen the one who's taking his desire as what? As worship. Or is, or is God? And that's why Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah azza wa jal, he mentioned that la, nobody is free from shirk al-asghar illa man khalasa min al-ma'asi. Kullaha. Nobody is free from minor shirk except for the person who's free from all sins. Subhanallah. And Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he also mentioned that in the same way that every sin, no unnil al kufr, every sin you do is a type, a branch of kufr, of disbelief in Allah. Because sin, ma'asiyah, did do shukr, is the opposite of gratefulness. Okay? Because gratefulness is you act in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, some scholars differentiate between sins and others, a major, a minor shirk. Saying any sin you do associated or for the sake of the creation, it is what? Minor shirk. And any sin you do just following your desires, it is what? A sin. And the other scholars say no, because even that which you do in following your desire is what? You put your desire before what? The obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu ta'ala a'ala. As for minor shirk, minor shirk, wallahi, they are many. Many. And because there's so many, it's very difficult to enumerate or account for them. However, for those taking notes, you could summarize minor shirk in the following four categories. Minor shirk. Number one, when we defined major shirk, we said it's taswiyah i'tiqadiyah. What is major, what is major shirk? Equality in what? In belief. For you to summarize what minor shirk is, first it has to be opposite of that, which is what? Equality in statements and words statements and words that by it you do not intend its reality what is an example because i know some of you studied uh, tawheed before what is an example of a statement a person makes and when i say minor shirk do not take it as being minor what is an example of a statement somebody makes that's minor shirk What's an example of a statement? He doesn't intend the reality, but he says it. Al-Half, to swear by other than Allah. That people swear by other than Allah, I swear by my mom's life. Because his mom is valued to him. But when you swear by something, you swear by that thing because you hold it in high... The reality of what you swear by is you exalt that thing. And nobody deserves ta'adhim but who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when Allah swears by his creation, who is Allah exalted? Himself, because he created it. And that's why you're not allowed to swear by who? By anything from the creation of Allah. So the reality of swearing by other than Allah, you've exalted that thing. But when a person says, I swear by my mom's life, are they exalting their mother? Many people don't intend that. When I say, I swear by my life, I swear by my children's life, it is minor shirk still. But because they don't intend his reality, which is ta'zim, exalting other than Allah, it is what? It is minor shirk. Another example in statement, somebody does you a favor, saves you from a situation, and he said, Law will Allah wa anta, if it wasn't for Allah and you, this is shirk. 
You don't intend this reality, but the statement is mine and shit, no matter what your intentions were. You never say, if it wasn't for Allah and you, that well, no. You say, if it wasn't for Allah, thumma anta, and then you or Allah making you a cause or reason. Oh, ma shi'ta, ma sha Allah wa shi'ta. Whatever you, Allah wills and you wills. La. This is all minor shirk. Minor shirk. And some people, Allah Ta'ala musta'an, forget you saying that to them, they've reached a level that they make that statement for themselves. How many of people they say, Allah just made you a cause or reason, whether you're a father, whether you're a husband, whether you're a boss at work, that I've given my wife risk, I, for many years. My employees, I've given them risk for five years. A'udhu billah. Inna Allah wa razzaq. Allah just made you a sabab. Just made you a sabab. Likewise, the second category that could be summarized with is, and where from the types of it is al-amal, any deed a person does from good deeds for the sake of dunya. This is all minor shirk. And there are too many. And that's why Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, Amma shirk fil iradat. As for shirk in intentions. Huwa al-bahar alladhi la sahila lah. Shirk in deeds, to seek the dunya or to show off. He says, Huwa al-bahar. It is an ocean, that ocean that has no, what? No shores. Have you seen an ocean with no shores? It has no shores. It's just too many. That, these that are done for others. He said, وَقَلَّ مَنْ يَنْجُوا مِنْهُ Very few people are saved from this. And that's why from the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that he asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to forgive you in that which you did in associate partners with him in that which you did willingly, knowingly, and unknowingly. That's the only way out of that one. Very few people are saved from this. The third category is Al-Ma'asi al qalbiya Sins of the heart that originate from obedience of other than Allah, from fear, love, hope, or putting trust in a person. And the last is to take something as a cause, the fourth, that is not a cause for security. For example, people have talisman or charms, good luck bracelet, ta'weez around their neck. This ta'weez doesn't save you, but you take it as a cause to save you. The ring as a cause to save you. This is shirk ul azhar. But we said again, all these different type of minor shirk is because of what? A person's intention. But it can become shirk ul akbar. If the person's intention does what? It changes. If it's a belief now, rather than an action. Also, al-mas'al thaniya the second issue related to shirk al azhar minor shirk, we come across many texts in the Qur'an and the Sunnah that such and such is shirk. How do we know when we come across a text whether it is, this is the second issue, for those taking notes relating to shirk al-azhar, how do we know whether it's minor shirk or major shirk? The first way you know is if it's mentioned explicitly in a text that this is minor shirk. If it's mentioned, who could give me an example what is mentioned as this is definitely minor shirk? Who could give me an example? The Sahaba, huh? Naam. Barakallahu feek. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they used to say, Kunna na'uddu arriya fi ahdi rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shirk asghar. We used to regard showing off or doing deeds to show off in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as what? Minor shirk. So any text you come across that mentions something is minor shirk is what? Minor shirk. Another way you know something is minor shirk, that it is mentioned as being shirk, however, it comes in an indefinite manner. What do we mean by an indefinite or an indefinite noun? In English, we have definite nouns. For example, we have definite articles like the boy, right? And if it's indefinite, it will be what? A boy. So when there's a hadith that says, 
such and such is shirkun not a shirku it is a form of shirk and not it is shirk you know it's what minor shirk an example talisman charm bracelet the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said shirkun it is a form of what shirk so therefore it is what minor shirk another way if you come across a text that uses al ubudiyah worship or servitude of allah which is the level of shirk however its generality regarding shirk is not mentioned but it's mentioned abd or ubudiyah for example the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ta'isa abdu dirham ta'isa abdu dinar the worshipper of the dirham is wretched the one that worship the dinar is wretched is this major shirk or minor shirk minor shirk oh the word nid rivalry rivalry when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam somebody said to him whatever you will whatever allah wills and you will is aj'altani lillahi niddan if you made a rival to allah this word nid if you find it it is what minor shirk tayyib also there are certain indicators that tells you it is minor shirk. For example, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Atira shirkun omens." You know, seeking omen. For example, you go out your door, you decide to travel, and to you, you have certain belief system that if the wind blows this way, it's a good day to travel. If a particular color cat passes in front of me, it's a bad day to travel. And some people actually seek this omen. People roll a dice. All of this is shirk. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that yudhibuhu with tawakkul. Allah removes this with what? With tawakkul, putting your trust in Allah. And major shirk could not be removed by what? Tawakkul. So this accompanying evidence he shows is what? Minor shirk. And not this issue of tira, contemporary. There are many people that do this. That seek omens in things that has no basis. For example, a person who's got an exam or performance, the famous statement that we think is nothing, break a leg. You know the root of break a leg? That one supposed to going to perform in a theater and they said good luck. And by saying good luck, the person broke a leg. So they never say good luck, say break a leg. Or certain things in the future, people say touch wood. Yeah, it won't happen. Fingers crossed. Or certain omens, I walked under a ladder. This is bad omen. People in all cultures, they have these belief systems. All of this shirkul azgar. But again, although it's shirkul azgar, minor shirk, it could lead to what? Major shirk. So these are the ways to know what is a shirk al azgar. Also, we know a shirkul azgar according to the consensus of the scholars that whatever ahlu sunnah wa jama'a, a rude, a shirkul asghar, it is shirkul asghar. And lastly, shirk al asghar, minor shirk is known based on the person who's making the statement. Ala hasab qailuhu, according to the person who says it. And from this is an important principle that qara'inul hal, the state or the condition of a person, to nazzalu manzila tu maqalu bil lisan. This is a very important principle. When you listen to the lectures of Uthaymin rahimullahu azza wa jal, he always tries to bring usul, fundamental principles. Because when it comes to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot memorize all the hadith, all the ayat. But if you have principles, it will gather everything for you together. And that's why they say, even before you study fiqh, you should study what? Usul of fiqh. When you look at all the hadith and fiqh, the ayah, kalam al ulama, they're too many. But if you know al usul, they say al usul chajma' laka al furu'. The fundamental principles gather all the branches for you. In the same way, the root of a tree, it gathers the what? The branches. And that's why in every single science, there's usul. There's usul al tafsir. So, usul al fiqh. So, it's an important principle I have to tell you now. He said, qara'inul hal. A person's condition, Based on what you know of a person's condition, 
that his condition is as the same status and level of statements of his tongue. In fact, he has more precedence. So if you know a person is a person of sunnah, a person of tawheed, and he makes a statement such as, if it wasn't for Allah and my mother, you know it doesn't mean the reality. So this statement, it depends on who is what? Who is making it, depend on the person. If a person says Allah is everywhere, and he's a Sufi, you know what he means by that. That Allah physically is everywhere. Likewise, many Muslims today, they do make that statement. If it wasn't for Allah and such, I swear by my children's life. So it depends on the person making the statement. And only does it depend on the person making the statement, it depends on the person's intentions. The intent of the person. If the intent of the person is to show equality between Allah and his creation, it's not shirk al azhar it's what? Major shirk. So if a person was to say, most of the time, I swear by my children's life, it's not because he thinks they're equal to Allah Azza wa Jal. But if a person, well, iyadu billah, was to say, I swear by Buddha, that's a different thing. If he's a Buddhist, and nobody made that statement except for a Buddhist anyway, you know what his intentions are. Now, the third issue is that we've mentioned concerning Sheikh al Azhar, that is that which doesn't lead, lead to major shirk. That's the only definition we gave. It doesn't lead to what? Major shirk. But what are the guiding principles? When does it become, when does minor shirk become major shirk? What are the guiding principles? The ulama, because it's so difficult, they don't mention it. They just give examples, swearing other than Allah. Statements of if you will, if Allah wills, you will. You know why? Because for it to go from minor to major is connected to the what? The heart and the intention of a person. Okay? So, for example, doing deeds to show off, in origin is what? Minor shirk. But if a person's intentions changes, and it does change, and that's why the ulama they say, and this one should be aware of minor shirk. That they say, إِذَا ثَبَتَ الْمُرَائِ وَدَامَ عَلَىٰ إِعْوَاجِهِ That when a person that does these all the time to impress people, to seek the dunya, if he continues upon this path, وَلَمْ يَرْجِ إِلَى الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And he doesn't return to the straight path, it will become lost في أودية الضلال in the valleys of misguidance. And وَأَدَاهُ الشِّرْكُ الْأَصْغَرْ إِلَى الشِّرْكِ الْأَكْبَرِ See that minor shirk? Eventually, it will lead into what? To major shirk. And this is not only doing this to show off. In every single minor shirk. And this is why you should fear it. Shaitan doesn't come to most people say, Ukfur, disbelieve. Sequentially, step by step. And that's why when we speak about this book of Kitabu Tawheed and studying Tawheed, it is very important. Many people nowadays, they want to listen to, you know, this Coca-Cola Iman, fizz, reminders, bite-sized lessons, excitement. But there's no better reminder than that which reminds you of what? The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we truly, truly understand it, it is very important to always go back to the issue of Tawheed. I remember here in Qatar, there was a buying and selling group. And the issue, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid and assist our brothers in Palestine. That somebody made a statement in support of the people in Palestine. Nobody cared who this person was, what this person called to, so long as he's supporting Palestine. And this is a man that openly calls to the worship of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Openly, he's calling to the worship of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's so obvious and so deep that even the Sufis they make the fear of him. Even the Sufis. And the people are like, "What's your problem, brother? He's calling to unity. What unity is there amongst the Muslims that what?" A Tawheed. And what is a greater loss than losing Tawheed in front of Shirk?
even the Philistine and the whole dunya, the Muslims are to be killed. And they died upon Tawheed is better than dying upon Shirk, even if it was to gain Philistine. Tayyib. And that's why they say the scholars that the reality of this illness, they said the reality of the sickness of shirk, the minor one, is that you should fear it severely. The one that continues down the path of sin, sequentially, eventually, it leads down, it leads him down the path. That which is small becomes big. Well, qalilu, and that which is little becomes much. Wala yadri, subhanallah, and he reaches a point. Fala yadri, illa wal Islam qad kharaja min yadihi. He doesn't even know when Islam has left him completely. This is the danger of sinning and this minor shirk. And he said, if you look at most people today, that their hearts have been connected to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isti'anatan, where they're seeking assistance. And we also ask ourselves, when something afflicts us or befalls us, what is the first thing we do? What is the first thing? And think of something that's before you recently. Is it to call a friend? Most of us. Now, what is it? Allah Ta'ala said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ Do I seek Allah's assistance? Do we think about that first? And we like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is Tawheed. إِذَا حَمَّ When something causing distress, فَرَّ إِلَى الصَّلَىٰ It will flee to the Salah. Allah Ta'ala said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, We know يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ your heart feels so much pain and constraint. Bima yaqulun. So what do you tend to do? Fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wa kum min as Mention the praise of your Lord and the glory of your Lord. Wa kum min as And become of those who prostrate. The more your masaib, the more prostration you should be doing. Is this our reality? That was sta'inu bi sabri wa salah? Our hearts will be connected to causes and our jobs. Isti'anatan, raja'an, khawfan, except for those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is safe from this. And that's why I said, anna musidat al-shirk billahi waqi'a mustamirra li da'af al-nufus. That the evil and the corruption of shirk is continuous due to the weakness of the soul. And the shaitan strives in making people fall into this. And mas'ala rabi'a, the last or the fourth issue, the second to last, contains Shirk al Asghar. The difference between Shirk al Asghar or Shirk al Akbar is that the major Shirk it takes a person out of the fold of Islam. And when we look at the text, you find whoever falls into this will abide in the hellfire forever and ever and ever. As for the minor Shirk, it's other than that. The person who falls into it, we don't call him Kafir. We don't say it's left to fold of Islam. And that's why it's been important to differentiate between major and minor. And they will not abide in the hellfire forever. Number two, major shirk, it makes a person's actions, all of his actions, null and void. As for minor shirk, only that action or that deed which minor shirk fell into it. And this is the danger of it, that somebody lives for many years, do many deeds, Hajj, Umrah, Ramadan, Qiyam, and because of one deed, one major shirk, everything becomes, it doesn't have to be many, just one becomes null and void. This is the greatest loss. And there's no such thing as ignorance is bliss. Whoever has the access or the ability to seek knowledge, and they do not seek that knowledge, there's no ignorance is bliss. Last issue we're going to look at, the proof for the division of shirk into major and minor. Number one, the hadith, as we mentioned, that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they used to divide it into major and minor. Number two, what we find in many ahadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
who say this is kufr. However, it is minor kufr. For example, قتل المسلم kufr. To kill a Muslim is disbelief. But is it major kufr? Why is it no major kufr? Allah Ta'ala said, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَلُ If two groups of the believers, they fight or kill each other. فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَهُمَا Number three, that which was mentioned by the Sahaba, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنْهُمْ And fourthly, the Salaf, رَحِمَهُمُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ In dividing into major kufr and major shirk and minor shirk. After this, the author, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ In a shirk, he began with the first ayah. And the first ayah, the author, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ As a supporting evidence for this chapter, it began with is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرْ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرْ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He doesn't forgive that partners should be associated with Him and He forgives other than that to whoever He Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will So Allah ta'ala says إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرْ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ the meaning of this part of the ayah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive anybody that meets Allah yawm al-qiyamah associated partners with him from acts of worship وَيَغْفِرْ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ and you forgive anything other than that what's anything other than that? what's anything other than that? any sin or minor shirk لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ here means don't necessarily think you're safe. لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ Whoever Allah wills to forgive. Okay? Also, وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Allah Ta'ala says, فَقَدْ إِفْتَرَ إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Whoever associate partners of Allah is indeed iftara, created إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا And the fawa'id or the benefits from this ayah, number one, مَنْ مَاتَ عَلَى الشِّرْكِ الْأَكْبَرِ Whoever dies upon major shirk, Hellfire is obligatory. It's a must for that person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all of tawheed and our parents. Because we're in a time we face many trials and tribulations. Walillahi alhamd. Whoever their mother or father has passed away in Islam, walillahi ta'ala alhamd. Wallahi, death is something that grieves all of us. It is a musibah. It's not about the strength of your iman. Allah Ta'ala said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when جَأَتْكَ مُصِيبَةُ الْمُوتِ when the calamity of death comes to you death is a calamity it's not because Allah said the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal it hurts and it pains us Wallahi the greatest calamity is that your parents down shirk that's the greatest calamity I remember when my father passed away and SubhanAllah this was during Covid and my brother-in-law was in the hospital. I was here in Qatar, nothing you could do. And he said to me, Alhamdulillah. He said, you know what? My brother-in-law is a convert to Islam. His parents are not Muslim. He said, Alhamdulillah, at least you could make dua for me, for him. If my father was to die, there's nothing I could do for him. That really grieved me. Because naturally, as a person, you have that natural love towards your parents. And that's what Allah Ta'ala told Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ You could not guide whoever you love. And this was talking about Abu Talib. وَلَكِنَ اللَّهَ حَدِّمَنْ يَشَاءَ And that's why Abu Bakr al-Saddiq رضي الله عنه When his father, Ibn Abu Quhaf, Abu Quhaf, when he accepted Islam, he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he cried. He said, Wallahi, out of his love for the Prophet I wish my father was Abu Talib. And Abu Talib was my father. That he had accepted Islam. Out of grief for the Prophet And this is why it is important to spread this knowledge of Tawheed amongst our family. There's no greater calamity than shirk, even amongst our children. Whereby now they're exposed to so many things online that contradict shirk, they don't even know they're doing it. Number two, Whoever dies upon Tawheed and he has major sins, Allah's forgiveness sin is under what? Under the will of Allah Ta'ala to forgive his sins or not to forgive it. 
From this ayah, Raddun ala al-Khawarij is a refutation of the Khawarij. Those who believe or take people outside the fall of Islam due to major sins, that they will abide in the hellfire forever. And lastly, the fa'id from this ayah, Sifatu Mashi'atillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the attribute of willing, I think. Bi idnillah ta'ala, the remaining ayat in this bab and a hadith, we'll go through it next week, inshallah ta'ala, slowly, slowly, and explain them and the fawahid from them, inshallah. Uh, any questions? Any questions? MashaAllah. So, so far, walillah alhamd, we've only covered the, the title. My question is to the brothers. And possibly the sisters this class we try as much as possible to give examples and there are different ways in covering a class there's some classes that usul of thalatha which was made or written for the layman for the general sense so therefore it's very simple the explanation is not deep because you go against the intent of the author kitab tawheed is a level up 